from the Mecca of Mormonism, Salt Lake City, Utah. This is Heart of the Matter, and I'm your host, Sean McCraney. This is the long show, and so I want to have a word of prayer with you, my brothers and sisters who seek God in truth and in spirit. Father, we love you and seek you, and we're trying to increase our ability to love everybody unconditionally. We pray that your spirit will be with Mags as she gets this program uh, recorded and ready to go out to people who will be watching and anybody who tunes in, Lord, that they will be inspired by the message and understand. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the year that I was born, 1961, in response to the Cold War, the Army Corps of Engineers assigned by President Kennedy um, sought out suitable buildings that would and could serve as fallout shelters in the event of nuclear attack. These buildings could be identified by a symbol back in the day, and it was a, a black circle that had a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle that were yellow in the inside. Three same size triangles, same size shape like this, and they pointed down and they put these signs in all and around all these buildings. Um, and when you saw them, um, theoretically, you could say, that's a good thing, right? But as a kid in 1960, uh, I mean, in 61, I was born. So when a kid in 1965, when you're driving around and you have these ominous signs stuck to buildings all around, it was frankly served a different purpose. It scared the living daylights out of me. I didn't find comfort in those signs. They're very scary looking. And they, they, they said a nuclear attack is possible in my life. And so um, it was nuclear fallout could occur when you saw it. And if you ask your parent, well, what, what is that sign? Well, that means if there's a, a bomb is dropped on America, we can run to that building and we might be safe. So those signs represented, though they were supposed to be helpful, terror. They represented danger. And I personally never related to the black and yellow signs as something good and something beneficial, but as something sinister and dark in the human experience. At the same time, there was a television show that was popular that I watched as a very young kid, and it was called Lost in Space. And it was loosely based on the novel, The Swiss Family Robinson, except it takes place in space. And in that show, there was a robot. He was called Robot, but his real name was B9, interestingly enough. And whenever there was danger present around little Will Robinson, the robot would say, danger, Will Robinson, danger, Will Robinson, right? So you take all that, warnings, you have robots saying danger, Will Robinson, and you have signs that are depicting danger all around. I mean, they put them on any building of that had substance, and you're going from um, a place of uh, relative calmness to a place of, I'm in danger, there's danger in the air that I need to be aware of. It's, there's something that could happen that would rip apart my life as I know it. Whether it's the robot saying, danger, Sean McCraney, danger, or it's the sign on the sign of the building to let me know we could be, have a bomb dropped on us at any minute. Um, there was danger in the air and these things served as warnings and signs. I am going to talk about some signs and warnings for you to use. And I'm going to borrow from that three triangled fallout shelter symbol that the Army Corps of Engineers used back in the day to help uh, uh, explain it. After decades of studying and teaching and analyzing the Word of God, uh, if I was asked to summarize what a gathering of believers should look like in Christ, um, it would look like this. So let me go to the whiteboard. I think after everything has been said and done, when I look at scripture, when I've looked at churches, when I've examined Christianity and Mormonism, I tend to think that the, the, the faith should look like this. 
a base of faith, hope, and love. These three are, are uh, these three, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. I think that there should be an emphasis on knowledge of the word. I think that there should be an emphasis on, on people choosing to make themselves humble, contrite. And I think topping it all off from this base, there is liberty. I think that that summarizes the Christian faith uh, wonderfully. And in the middle of that, we have the, the fruit of the Spirit. We have the fruit of the Spirit, which supports all of that, okay? And so we could even draw a nice triangle around all of that, okay? And if, if, if you are looking for a good church, if you're looking for a place to belong to as a Christian, you want to belong to a place that focuses on faith first. It's always faith first. Hope and love. And the greatest is love. And you want to focus on a church that, that works for you to gain knowledge of the scripture by the spirit. A church that endorses and helps you to understand humility and contrition before God and man and a church that gives you consummate liberty. That is what I think uh, the church best looks like. Now, you remember that I uh, talked about the Army Corps of Engineers and it coming up with this symbol. And that symbol back in the day meant danger. It meant scary. It meant that there's gonna be a fallout. Do I need to put that somewhere else, Mags? Oh. Let's darken it up. Okay, there is the danger symbol. Danger, Will Robin. And they put that all over buildings, okay? Now, I want to suggest to you that if we took this symbol and we insert it in this diagram for what great church is, we have the makings for a dangerous church. You ready? So let's see, make sure I don't blow it. It looks like this. It looks like this, right? It looks like this, and it looks like this. All right, and then it looks like this. There's your danger symbol. There. So we have faith, hope, and love. Yes, that's there, and we have knowledge, and we have humble condition, we have liberty. But inserted in there, removing this, we have something uh, that is dangerous to the faith. What is it? Th this, is, this is my uh, definition of what it is. Dogma. Demanded praxis. Demanded practices, rites, rituals, dogma, and tradition. When you insert the fallout shelter symbol in the midst of this beautiful re religion and you insert dogma and demanded praxis and tradition, you destroy, you box up and, and compartmentalize these principles. You separate them out and you let dogma and demanded practice and tradition be at the heart of what the church is about, you see? And when that occurs, the church will suddenly turn into something different. So I'm gonna erase some of this and show you. When you put dogma, religious dogma, and demanded practices and tradition in a church, what happens is these things, which are compartmentalized and conditional, all disappear and they're replaced by other things at the top authority because you have dogmas that need to be 
kept in place and you have practices that have to be done right and you have traditions that must be upheld so you have authority right up there at the top of it seeping down and in the midst of these things you have judgment and then you also have control so what was once liberty up here is now control and then you have fear at the base of it all because people are afraid of the authority and the dogma and the tradition and not being right. So you have fear and then you have bondage. When you have control, you have bondage. And finally, you have unrest. Instead of a place to rest, you have unrest. All the result of dogma, demanded practices and tradition. And what's interesting about that is this is what most churches build their foundation on. They build their foundation on dogma, demanded practices and traditions. And from that springs authority and judgment of others, control, fear, bondage, and unrest. You have here the making of a fugly church. Fugly. Remember the first model we went with. We had faith, hope, love. Do you remember? We had liberty at the top. We had gaining knowledge here and we had humility. But we inserted this, this, this symbol of death into the midst of that and called it dogma, demanded practice, and temptation. And it all turned to this junk. This is called religion, folks. And it is what we have been fighting against here. You have a really good heuristic to help you to help you understand what God had for you all the way back in the beginning with faith, hope, love, knowledge, humility, and liberty in Christ. And what men have done when they've taken dogma, they've taken doctrines and said, this is how it must be. You must believe this way. And they've taken demanded practices. You must pray this way. Communion must be this way. You must be baptized this way. You must receive this right this way. And then they say, and these are the traditions of the fathers. These are the traditions of Christ and his apostles. And they say, we have the authority to impose them upon you. And you become judgmental of those who don't follow along. And they begin to control your life and your time and your money. And then fear begins to rise up. Are you okay with God? And then you find yourself in bondage. And the rest Jesus came to give you becomes unrest. And take a, take a triangle and put in, put in these places what God wants his uh, body of believers to have because of Christ. Then take that triangle and insert these three right there in the middle of it. And you have what religion produces. Test your church by these things. Look around you and see. And if you find yourself captive un at, at, at unrest, if you find yourself in bondage, fearing, judging others and being judged, being controlled and under the authority of men, walk away. Walk away and remove that three fang thing that hangs there in the center and find a relationship with Christ, which will provide you with faith, hope, love, knowledge, humility, and ultimate liberty.